his question is how to get your code into into production. How do you get your code that you're serving locally onto the web? Which you know is a nice thing to do. It makes you feel like a real web developer to be on the actual web rather than just in the safety of your own computer. So yeah, the full question is I've been doing a few tutorials on Node.js and have been creating all sorts of things like small servers and serving pages, but the tutorials never mention how to get that small project out of a local host and onto a real production site. Does anyone know? So yeah, and, and there is a suggestion for how to set up a Node.js application for production on a Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu system. Linux, but that's a bit complicated. I mean, that, that, that would, that's totally a viable solution, but I just wanted to show you something even, even simpler uh, using Heroku, which is free for things like this. It's super ideal just to, you know, if you want that burst of satisfaction of getting your, your app onto the real uh, bona fide internets. So I'm going to make a little uh, example node server folder here, and I'm going to call yarn init, which will just give me, oh, let me try that one more time. If I add the Y flag, it'll give me all the default settings. So what that did was just give me a package JSON. So really nothing of import. And I'm going to add, not example, but express. So now I have this express server. This is just a very simple framework for serving applications. And then I'm going to open this up in a text editor. Hey. Hey, uh, Chris, I'm sorry, uh, Kit, can I ask real quick, um, Yarn, okay. is that like NPM? Yes, yeah, yeah, Yarn is pretty much identical to NPM. It's a little newer. Uh, it does some other fancy things. Uh, they're pretty much identical. So yeah, you could have replaced uh, Yarn in it with NPM in it and Yarn add with NPM install, and it would have been almost identical. Uh, yarn gives you a yarn.lock file. Uh, and we don't even need to worry about what that is, but they're, they're uh, essentially identical. So now I have this package JSON file with my name and a, and a main file here, which doesn't exist yet. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a, a script. So I'm going to and I'm going to add start. And start is just going to simply run node and then index.js. So it's going to run this currently non-existent file. So let's make this existent. So I'm going to go over and make an index.js file, and I'm going to import express, and I'm going to also make an app, which is going to be equal to calling the express function. That's how you set up express, and then you can add a route handler for the hello path. I'm going to have it say, when we, whenever we go to you know, slash hello in our browser, it's going to just say, I guess, yo to us. Maybe I'll make that in a, uh, an h1 tag, so a very bold yo. And one last step is that we have to actually have it listen. So I'm going to have it listen on port 3000. This means we can now run it locally. So let's test that out really quickly. That's just a matter of saying, uh, well, now we could say yarn start or even npm start because we wrote that start script. So it should run. Actually, no, one sec. I'm going to change this to a better number. And run it. And if we go. Back to my browser over here. And one, two, three, four. Ah, it says cannot get slash. That makes sense because we've only defined hello and then we get our big yo. So every other route up here is going to be quitting Safari. But so it, it worked there. It was is the important point there. I'll open Safari up in the background. And and now we want to get it online. Um, so to do that, it's really just one small change where instead of listening on port 3333, this is great for localhost, but when we deploy it to Heroku, it's going to give us our, our, our own port um, that's basically open up to the, the internets so that when we go to whatever the, the link that the URL that Heroku generates for us, it'll actually serve up our application. It will not serve it up if we uh, go to 3333. Three, three. Basically, we need the, the location of the front door to our application. And it, it, Heroku will define that for us. So instead of doing 3333, three, 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 we'll use that logical OR operator that Chris talked about. We'll say process.env port. So this is going to be an environment variable uh, called port. And it's going to use that. Or if we're in development and this doesn't exist, this is going to use that 3333 three, three, three that we had defined before. So that's all we need to do on the code side. So can, can I yeah. 
And can I clarify something here real quick? So sure. first you, you did the, the business with Yarn where you basically just like initializing your, your environment. And then you wrote this tiny little Express app that just says yo on the screen. And that would be like a replacement for any Node or Express app. So, so basically, you're just kind of setting the stage. And what you're about to do now, when you put process.env.port, is you're preparing to deploy. Exactly. Yeah. This is, just a, this is all just a placeholder for your, your app here. This is an example of, of some boring app logic uh, in this case. This is, this is yo if you go to slash hello. Otherwise, it gives you a 404. Got it. And, uh -huh. and can you just explain what is process.env? Like, why do you need to put that there? So process is a special. Uh, objects in, in Node that holds a bunch of different properties. You can get some information about the current Node process that's running. It has a property called env, which is an object that stores all of the environment variables. So that's in, in your terminal, in your, in your shell environment. Those are all the variables that exist outside of the process. But, uh, so that's where Heroku, uh, on, on, your, on this little web server that it gives you for free, it stores inside of a, an environment variable called port in all caps, the, uh, the address of the, the port that you need, the port uh, number that you need to serve on in order to actually be accessible to the web. Got it. Yep. Uh, so now, to actually get it up on Heroku, we have to do two things. First, we need to make sure that this is a valid Git repository. So I initialized one, and I'm going to do git add everything, and then I'll do git commit, and I'll just say initial commits. And now, oh, did I? Oh, sorry, git commits message, initial commits. And now I will run the Heroku create command, which is going to create, uh, it's going to talk to Heroku and create a new uh, web app for us. And it's also going to add a remote to our Git repository so that we can easily push our code up to it. And I'll show what that looks like in a moment. So if I do Heroku create, it created an app. It's called Frozen Escarpment, 16.059. And here's a, here's a link to it. If I open it, it's going to be empty uh, because we have to push our code still. Now if I type git remote dash v for verbose, we'll see that we now have a Heroku remote, which points to Frozen Escarpment. So now all we have to do is call git push Heroku master. And this is going to push our current, our master branch, all of our code, to this Heroku app. And if I've done everything correctly, which isn't completely assured, we should see first a, a change on this page, which would give us an error. Oh, now it's loading, so you know it's, uh, it's doing something. There we go, awesome, that's a good cannot get because we never defined that route, but we did define hello, so we should get yo, and now we get yo. And now everyone can go to frozen-escarpment-16059.herokuapp.com slash hello and behold the beautiful uh, header that we have here. So that took a couple of moments, um, and, it's, and most of that time was setting up the, the app and also explaining it. So it's really easy to use, and it's free. I, I'm not going to have to pay for this. There are some limitations, whereas it, the first time you load this, after a short delay, it'll, take, it'll spin up the dyno. Basically, it puts your website to sleep. And uh, it can only be awake for, I don't know, a certain number of hours a week. But if it's just for a toy application or a demo and you just want to have the satisfaction of sharing something with your friends or just getting on the internet, it's, it's really a good solution. But yeah, are there any, any questions from you, Pat, or did, did, did the chat have anything to say? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with something real quick. So mm -hmm. this free tier on Heroku, what are some things that I might use it for? Like, could I, could I publish all my portfolio projects and kind of use them as, as kind of like a resume support? Yeah, it's really, it's really good for that. Uh, yeah, so uh, something that I've recommended to students, you know, if you want to get your, your resume apps up on the, uh, a good thing to do would be have a link to the Roku app, uh, to your production link in your GitHub repo for that project. So you could share that with employers. You might want to mention that it's on the hobby tier of Heroku, which should be familiar to most uh, companies that you're going to be talking to, just so that they know it might take 10 seconds to load if they're looking at it for the first time uh, and no one else has poked it recently, uh, just because of that sleeping behavior. But other than that, 
it works. It works just fine. You can have databases. You can have backends. Uh, you can use all sorts of stuff. Um, it's it's Heroku is pretty generous with its free free tiers. Awesome. That was really cool. Yep, it's super fun. And and also, if you're not making a backend, maybe this is also worth mentioning. There's another service uh, like Heroku that actually scales even nicer. It doesn't put it to sleep. However, it's not a backend application. So this. Here we're having a web server, right, where we want to handle web requests and, and send back custom information. But if your site is just a static site, if it's just, you know, HTML and JavaScript on the front end, um, that, is, that isn't being dynamically generated like this. It's just, you know, something you might want to put in, like, Dropbox or that you would have had on an old, tiny, uh, static uh, web server, just, a, just a, a hierarchy, a folder hierarchy of web pages and images and things like that. You can use another service called Surge. So you can go to surge.sh, and that kind of explains this. It's almost just as simple. You do npm install global surge, and then you just run surge. So that's that's really easy to do. And I could just give a really quick example of that, just because it's so easy. I'll make a new uh, surge example, and I will simply echo a h1 hello into a a new text file. So I will do that into index.html. And then if I just check that out, so yeah, we ha and I have an index.html that has the text h1 hello. Now I can just type surge, and I'm going to serve this folder, and it's and we could even name it. So private earthquake, I kind of like. I'll keep private earthquake, and boom, it's now private earthquake. There we go. <laughs> There's a website that we can share, and we can even you know name it differently. So if you just want to get a website up really quickly, that's great. This doesn't go to sleep. This can be even a complicated front-end app built in something like React. It can't have the server elements. Um, you can't you can't have like a database hosted here or any sort of custom routing. But you can, of course, have your JavaScript point to a custom backend, so you could have it point to your Heroku backend or something. Of course, then that sleeping problem might uh, come into play again. But this is this is also really nice. Um, even nicer if, if it's just a purely static website you're serving, like if you just have a resume site or something. You can even, for free, give it a custom uh, a URL. Um, I mean, you have to you have to register your domain name, but you can uh, point it to a, your search uh, address for free. So actually, I have that for one of one of my sites. Uh, it's just hosted on Surge, and it works really nicely. And it's totally free, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Kind of amazing how much how much you can get done for free now. Yeah, uh, of course you know it's it, some people could be thinking like, man, I, I, this all seems a little magical, and it totally is. But that's because a lot of uh, what is I guess now referred to as DevOps stuff, developer operations, the vague umbrella term for putting your app on the web and dealing with you know availability and distribution and getting yeah releases. And scaling that that's that's it's that's a whole job that's a whole occupation in and of itself that's many occupations many jobs many specialties that are in that field uh, so I mean if that interests you uh, then do it by all means and it's all good stuff to learn there's a lot of juicy information there but if what you want to do especially at the beginning is just worry about not configuration because uh, there is so much configuration and not all these kind of details that aren't necessarily exciting when you're just starting out, you just want to code and get stuff and cool things that you've made on the internet, then there are so many solutions and there's nothing wrong with using them. And a lot of professional apps use them. I know genius.com, gene.us, this is a pretty website. This used to be on Heroku. Oh, no, not this one. Genius, the one with all the <laughs> the rap lyrics. I think it's just genius.com, which has now expanded into just sort of annotated everything, um, which is a really cool website. Uh, this this is on Heroku and it's a pretty huge site. I think they were one of Heroku's largest sites for a while. I don't know if they're still on Heroku, but it's totally valid to use Heroku. Um, of course, it'll start costing you money if you want a real uh, a app with a large user base on it. But.